ecosystems are made up of the species, the animals and the plants, the environment they live in, but also what they do. And if we take that together, all of those things provide things that we call marine ecosystem services for people. So that might be, for example, the fish that people eat as food, the products that we can use and develop in pharmaceuticals to help cure people of serious illnesses. The sea helps to maintain the climate that we have. The sea also transforms a lot of the waste that we put into it into cleaner and, and better things for us. And it provides an environment where we can play, which is the sort of cultural services, uh, interacting with charismatic species like whales and dolphins. Just even walking along the coast and seeing the seascape, that's, that's all part of ecosystem services. To my mind... Um, I'm most interested in the psychological effects of spending time in and around the marine environment. And we're beginning to be able to compare those psychological benefits to the psychological benefits you could get from other activities, such as watching TV or going and watching a football match. If we can think about the marine environment in terms of the services it provides, we can start to think about what do we want to manage in the marine environment, what activities do we want to manage that, that give us the marine ecosystem services that we really want and weighs off against the marine ecosystem services that we're less concerned about. So for example, recently we've, we've started using marine renewable energy, offshore wind, we're thinking about offshore tide, but that, that maybe weighs against the use of the seas for, for catching fish because it restricts the areas that fishermen can go to. So we have to make trade-offs. Which ecosystem services we, do we want? Uh, fisheries, when you trawl the seabed, can actually damage the seabed. To actually think about ecosystem services, we do need fundamental understanding of the ecology of the marine environment, of the different species that are there, what they're doing, how much of it they do, what affects how much they do, and what affects how many of those animals are there. If we change our marine environment by doing activities in the marine environment, we have to understand those changes and then use them to inform the decisions we make in the environment. But at the same time, we also need to understand how people interact with the marine environment, what they value, which bits of the ecosystem do they value, which services do they think are important. Um, and that, that might be monetary values, or it might be social values, or it might be about wanting to know that things still happen in the marine environment, not just for themselves, but also for future generations. I'm particularly interested in public health and public health interventions. So we've got 8 million people who live in England within 5 kilometres of the sea. If we can improve coastal access, we can start understanding the psychological benefits that might be experienced and, and then multiply that up to the, the whole population. You need to have um, ecologists, marine biologists, uh, and economists, I suppose, and, so and sociologists working together to identify the linkage between the ecosystem and uh, humans or society, because the human is central. So if the, if the, the ecosystem has a process, but, but the, there's no service from that for our society, well, we, we don't really concern ourselves with that. Decision makers are really keen on the ecosystem services concept because they can see it as a way of translating uh, the impacts that we have on, on our environment into policy-relevant social changes and policy-relevant economic changes. So it helps them to conceptualise the importance of what we're doing to the environment and helps them, therefore, to inform the policy that they need to develop and the management actions they need to take. Uh, you've seen, a, 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 I suppose, a change in terms of a marine and coastal ecosystem-based management where previously the focus would have been uh, one direction. It would, have been, it, would have been, it would have been on the impacts that humans were having on the marine environment. Uh, and it would have been probably, most, in most extent, quite negative. But now it's gone the other direction. Uh, decision makers are starting to focus on uh, the, the impacts ecosystems have on humans. And that's a really good thing because it's, get, it's getting... Uh, people, you know, getting people to think about uh, the, that two-way process uh, and to think about the value associated with these ecosystems for, for human existence. I think a broader understanding of the way in which human society depends upon the natural environment has got to be a good thing. Um, clearly there's a debate about monetisation. 
Um, but let's face it, decision makers don't have pots of well-being. They distribute around the population. They distribute monetary resources in an attempt to increase well-being. So I think that although the goal may be human well-being, um, happiness and health, I can understand why they want to monetize these decision-making processes. I think the barriers and challenges to using this approach are really attached to uh, having too much emphasis on the monetary value and exactly how much it's worth. Because there's too, it's too difficult to quantify. It's very difficult to quantify, both in terms of um, what that ecosystem is actually providing, but also in terms of, I suppose, the equivalent of a currency exchange rate. You know, what's it actually worth in terms of money? And that can go up and down according to all sorts of, of, of issues, just as it could in, in any economic market. People are prepared to pay more for a house with an ocean view. So people intuitively monetize their own well-being in relation to the coast, for example. Um, but obviously there's a limited supply, so that can force the prices up. What we're more interested in doing is working out the benefits across the whole range of the population, um, not just those who can afford it. So we really, I think, need to perhaps not focus too much on quantifying exactly the monetary value. It's relative. If it goes up, that's the important thing. If it goes down as a result of human activity, that's the critical thing. It's this sort of relative shift, if you like. And uh, valuation of ecosystem services can be quite, quite good if, you're, if, if, you, if you use it and explain it in terms of relative values rather than absolute values, I think. Marine life is changing. We know that there are more outbreaks of jellyfish. We know that the species of fish that we used to catch in, in one place have maybe moved somewhere else, or we're catching new fish, new types of fish where we previously caught traditional fish like cod. And Vectors has looked at the fundamental drivers for these change to try and understand why is the system changing, what is changing in the ecology. It's also looking at what are the implications of those changes for society for the economy and how might we want to manage those changes in terms of, of governance and policy. And pivotal to that, in the middle of, of understanding the ecology and understanding the implications for society, is understanding the impacts on ecosystem services and Vectors is really looking to how can we actually understand the impacts on ecosystem services because that translates the ecological understanding into societal impact and societal implications and implications for the economy. Mm -hmm.